edition of Acadiana Outdoors. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes as your host, Byron Briggs and Nikki Dejan, bring you up to date on what's happening in the outdoor world. Whether we're fishing for big bass, chasing boss gobblers, or after that elusive Boone and Crockett buck, stay tuned for an outdoor adventure you won't forget. And here's your host, Byron Briggs. That's all I can catch today. Well, we're out on the levee today, and we're gonna go ahead and, and go sack lay fish, huh, Nick? Yep. You were gonna go catch those two cows, Byron? Yeah, I tell you what. At least we have something to eat. <laughs> no. Let me show you what we're gonna be doing today, Nick. We're gonna be fishing for sack lay today with a little jig and a slip cart. All right, go. And I wanted to show you something here. Jeanette Taylor, uh, Jeanette Ardwan is the one that showed me how to do this. It's a little slip cart. All right, get it, get it, I'm gonna get it real close. Okay, and here's a little slip cart. All right. And it'll slide down, and, and that way when you get hung up, you can run your line down and get it unhooked. All right. Now, let me show you also, All I don't right. know if you can get this. I got it, I got it, stay right there. And uh, it's, that's the little jig I'm gonna be using today. And of course, you see how the jig is, is hanging sideways like this? Right. Like that? That's how they have to be. So we got a great show today. What we're going to be doing is we're going to go ahead and go sack lay fishing. And then we're going to go ahead and uh, cook the sack lay today. Right. And isn't it, isn't it a beautiful day? It really is. So we're fishing a bar pit up here along the, uh, the ladder. So we're going to go ahead and, uh, and get started, Nick. Okay. Well, let's, let's get the boat in the water. Okay, Byron, you ready? I'm ready, Nick. What we're gonna do is, we got a little south wind here, which ought to be ideal. We're just gonna drift down this bank here and jig them up. Yes, sir. Are you ready? I'm ready. Let the wind just take you now. All right. Nicky, uh, what you think? I think we're gonna get them today, Byron. You think so? Because we got to catch some to fry. Oh, we're gonna fry them too. Oh yeah. Okay. We brought everything with us. We got. Uh, you know, Nick. A lot of people don't. Uh, this is old timey way of doing it. Going out. That's right. Catching uh, them. Uh oh, you had a bite. Uh huh. Catching them and frying them right there on the bar bank. That's Tell you what, Barn, you see this pole right uh -huh. here? B&M? Yeah. Sent me this, it's called a Cadillac Combo. It's 12 feet. And you know, Sackley are real skittish fish. They are. The line comes up through the center. Oh, okay. And I mean, I tell you what, I've used it two or three times. You gotta get used to it, but yeah. I tell you what, once you get used to it, you're not gonna use anything else. You know, that's what I got. Now you use it a two-piece B&M 10 foot. This right. is a 12 foot, but yours has eyes on the outside. With a little, uh, and listen, this is so light. Look, you just, it's, it's light as a feather. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna have to send this to BM and let them see how good these things work. Show yeah. them those fish we caught. Okay, uh, talking about spawning exactly, I see you fishing real close to the bank. Well, I tell you what, ordinarily I'd be fishing six inches, a foot from the bank and about six inches deep. But the, the drop off is pretty steep here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is probably the next two weeks is gonna be with the actually start to spawn those big ones yeah and so what we're doing this is ideal to beat the banks you know this is really good and if you catch them right you catch nothing but those big ones and and you don't fish deep you fish about eight eight ten inches twelve right. inches deep right but because this is a steep bank i'm fishing just a you know about maybe a foot deep right but it's starting to happen, and this is you, you kind of have to keep fishing during the year and, and find out when you get a week or 10 days of cold weather, somewhere between March and April. The first week it starts to get real warm, the big sack will come up against the bank and start to spawn. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's what we're doing now is we're beating the banks. You got in there? Yeah, man. Huh? Yeah, nice little sack. Wait, let me see. 
talk about, huh? How about that? Boy, that's a nice one, Nick. Yeah, and I'll tell you what else I'm using huh. is, uh, I'm using one of these power, power grub tails. Uh-huh. Made by, uh, see that little yellow tail on there? Yeah. Just add that to it. That's made by, uh, let me see. <laughs> Well, Nick, it don't make any difference. Let me see your fish. That's a nice fish you got there. Isn't that something? Yeah, we're going to fry him, huh? Yeah, you dang right. I think we found him. Think so, huh? Yeah, we've been looking for him. And look, see, Ryan, every sackle a fishman ought to bring this. You put that fish in there, All right. throw that over the side. <laughs> and you tie it to the boat, though? Oh, yeah, I tied it to the boat. Before you throw it? That's right. All right. OK. I told you. When I yeah. saw that splash along the bank, yeah. I want you to see the size of this tackle. This is what you call a spawner. What's that, Nick? Look. Oh, yeah. Tell you what, that's a big sackle there. Golly, Nicky, let me see. That's a spawner. You remember when I saw that little yeah. splash back there? I said, Barn, that's a spawning sackle. Yeah. That's what we're looking for right there. Hold him up there. Oh, yeah, huh? Is that a good one? That's a good sackle, Nick. How you like that? You going to put him in your basket? Yep. I was caught with a power grub. Power grub. Yep. And I'm going to put him in the basket if I can get him in the basket. All right. That's there you go. Boy, that's great, isn't it? Cool. I told you. Yeah, you're right. I told you. <laughs> You don't think I know how to sackle it? Oh, you're fish. a sackle it fisherman, Nicky. You're the best. <laughs> Nick, I tell you what, Nick. I got a big one here, buddy. What side you gonna get him on? I don't know. Easy, Ooh, easy. I mean, that's big. Easy. You have to get down in the boat. Yep. You got him? I think I got him. He, I, I got him, but he got me, Nicky. But don't lose him. That's a guy. Look at the size of that one, Nicky. Bring him in. Easy, lip him. I gotta lip him, that's the only way. Look at the size of that sack, like, will you? That's the only thing bad about using a long pole. Easy, barn, easy. Don't lose him, for the viewers. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> now that's what you call a sack, like, That's Nick. a sack, like. Nicky, his mouth. How big are his eyes? His eyes are that big around. Boy, I barely had him hooked. Look at that. Is that a sack of Well, let's put him in the basket. All right, buddy. You got him, Nick. My goodness. <laughs> Look at that big hog. Go. He's pulling the boat, Nicky. Look at that fire. My goodness. Look. Golly, <laughs> Nicky. Man. Boy, man. ain't that something? Yeah. And Nick. I tell you, I got a little. Nicky. Tell Berkeley, us why. Berkeley Power Grub on the end of oh, okay. here. But fine. Wait, let me get him. There he is. Now that's what you call a sackle. That's huh? a sackle. And Nicky, you know, uh, one thing is you you put your thumb in their mouth because if you jerk them too hard, oh, you can't put, put, you can't lift these. In the not those big ones, huh? They're too big. Yeah. Too big. That's pretty, I'll tell you. Man. Boy, we're gonna have us a fish fry in a little while, Nick. You know that? Man. Huh? Man. Yeah. <laughs> Nick, you were talking about a guy from Eunice a while ago. Yeah, has anybody seen Freddy Fruge lately? <laughs> I saw him the other day, Nick. Yeah, Freddy's a good friend of mine. We yeah. went to college together, and I just, I hadn't seen Freddy. Uh -huh. So if anybody's in Eunice seen Freddy, tell him we look at him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and this one. All right. Now, that's a nice little sackle, but I'm going to tell you what, that Berkeley Power Grub. Yeah. All right, they work. How many I've caught? I know. Three to your four to your one, <laughs> but true. you caught the biggest one. That's not a bad little no. sack of legs. No, <clears throat> that's not bad. But we're starting to hit them. They're not really close to the bank. They're like yeah. 10 feet off the bank. I know. Let's, let me let me fish now. What you got, Nick? All right, I think this is one of the side products of sack of fish. Now I'm just going to bring him in here. I want you to look at this. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Nicky. Huh? I'm telling you, huh? How about that's, that? That's great. That's great, So huh? we're going to catch and release that, right? No. <laughs> We're well, good. Put him in the basket. Oh! Ooh, 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 ooh. 
Let me try and get this thing. Look at that, Nikki. Huh? Look at that. What is it? Bad. You got it? Is off? No, we look at the top. Golly. I bet he's seven pounds. Oh, come on, huh? I bet you. You see him? No. 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 You see him? Golly, Nicky. Oh. Got him? Golly. Now that's what you call a bass, huh? <laughs> huh? Yeah. Isn't that great, huh? I like that. Boy, I tell you what, you good yet, Nicky? Thank you, Byron. Thank you. You like that? It's a nice bass, huh? Boy, it is, huh? How big is it? About three? Yeah. Well, uh, this is first class, isn't it, Nicky? Tell you what, Byron, it doesn't get any better <laughs> than this. You sound like Linda Cornett, huh? Oh, is that what Linda says? Yeah, that's what Linda says all the time. Oh, man. Brian, how's it going, bud? Well, I tell you what, bud. If it, if it gets any better than oh, this. I'm going to tell you what, Nicky, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable the amount of fish that we've caught today. <coughs> oh, yeah, I'm telling you. I mean, we're going we're gonna to show our viewers after a while what we caught. But we can't film every fish, you know? No, but uh, when we get to when we get back the bank. To, yeah, when we get back to the landing. Yeah. We're going to... Uh, yeah. Show them all the fish we and listen, Byron, is the wind affecting our catch? No. And I tell you what, we got about a 10 mile an hour wind. That wind is blowing. And we tan them up. You know, Nicky, we're just fishing in a little bar pit here. Right. Along the, uh, the levee. Right. And a place like this is, is, is not fish that, that much. That's what makes it real good. It's you know? full of fish. It's full of fish. I'll tell you what. Right. I'm scared to put my line in the water. i tell you what. All right, well, that's enough conversation. I'm going to get back to fishing. All right, I'm going to start filming you now. All right. Let's see if I can get him in. I'm going to lift him. All right, Nick. There you go, huh? Well, what we're doing is we're down at the end of this drain here, and with the wind blowing down this way, and I told Barn, I said, Seems like a lot of bait fish would be down here, and right when we got down here, that's what we produced right there. Yeah. Nice fish, huh, Byron? It is, real good. Yeah. And I'll tell you what else we're using. We've gone, gotten rid of that uh, fish stringer. Fish stringer, and going to a fish basket. Yeah. As long as you got the fish basket basket tied onto the boat, Nick. Right. And there's a, another Berkeley Power Grub. <laughs> Bit the <laughs> dust, huh? Yeah. It's a good thing to have a lot of them in a bag. Talk about. So. You know what our trademark is? What? You see, you, you remember a while back we, we did a show about they had water in the boat? Right. Huh? Yeah. <coughs> well. Fine. You, you have to let the viewers know we do have life jackets in the boat. We do. We got uh, Coast Guard approved boat cushions and we have all of that. So we're okay right now. Well, we're Plenty okay. I mean, we okay as long as we float. Right. Nicky. Well, we're not out in any big lake either. No. But Nikki, we need to uh, get us some to start bailing in a little while, I think. I know. You know, uh, when things start floating. In the boat? In the boat. Yeah. Uh, it's time to. Uh... And Nikki, you, you're fishing uh, pretty close to the bank again. Well, I, I, you're fishing about 18 inches deep. I tell you what, if you look at that basket of fish we have, you'd see why. Yeah. Big, big sack of lay right on the bank right now. That's where we're going to catch them. Just use that little switching mode. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, Bob. Huh? You, I'll fish with the uh, Berkeley Power Grub. Day. And uh, I 
haven't caught uh, a lot of little fish, but I've caught a lot of big fish. Right. And, I know. Uh, I know you you switched to the power grub, didn't right. you? Right. Yeah. Well, let me put this thing down. We need to go get us a can, Nikki. Well, you know. To, to bail up the boat. <clears throat> one thing, we're fishing in a place where there's no litter. Which yeah. Which is good to see. Because uh, I hate to see all that trash on the banks of these fishing uh, spots and all of that. People, when they go fishing, ought to pick up this stuff and take it home. It's true. Yeah. All right, let me put this thing down and get get to fishing. All right. Well, tell you what, Byron, some mamma jamma sackle there. You talk about, huh? Look at that. Let me see. That's you call some slabs, huh? You know that? That's right. You know we got a a, a nice chest full, Nicky. Huh? Look at that. Well, that's pretty, huh? What you figure? We got about 25? Oh, we got an ice chest of them. Are you ready to start cleaning them and maybe we can and cook them? And I tell you what, that's the little one. Look at that. <laughs> Isn't that something? That's the one I want to eat, though. Yeah. That's They're the, the best, best one. It's the best fry. So that's what you call an ice chest full of fish. It's so true. Gonna, what's the tip of the day, Bob? Tip, uh, no, no, you, you give the tip of the day. Catch them in grease. <laughs> no, that's not it. Right. It's catching grease. Catching grease. Right. Like catch and release, catch and grease. We're going to fry them right now. We're gonna right clean now? Them. Yeah, we're going to clean them and we're going to fry them right here on the bar bank. All right. Okay? Well, I'll tell you what now. Let's, let's start cleaning them now. That's a nice bunch of fish, so I'll tell yeah. you what. They got some sackle in there, Nikki, that are just unbelievable. I mean, look at this. Yeah, yeah. You know, you don't. That, now, let me tell you something. That's some hogs there. You know that? That's big sackle. They are. All right. Well, let's uh, let's turn this boat. Let's. What you doing there, Byron? <laughs> Nicky, I'm I'm scaling the fish right here in the boat. Yeah, and we'll just hose that out when we get home, right? Yeah. And we. <laughs> we're fixing the barn. Uh, what's that, Nick? Well, I got, uh, I'm scaling them right here, Nicky. And I'm going to go down to the bayou and I'm going to wash them off in just a minute. Right, and then we're going to, what I'm are cut, those little slits, Byron? I'm cutting slits so that the season will go in there real good. And we're going to do real good with cornmeal. And uh, come over here, Nicky, and I'm going to show you what. Listen, I'm gonna tell you something else, Nicky. The big fish we can't put in the potty. Let me let me hold up these two right here, Nicky. I want to just show our viewers what what two big sackle look like. I know. Isn't that something? Huh? That's some monsters. That's monsters there. Yeah. Look, let me get a small one here. I'm gonna get these two small ones, and I'm gonna scale those and show our operation we got here, Nicky. Let me show you. Let me show you what we got. We got a burner. And we got a little pot, and we got the ice chest, and we got all of our seasoning and all our stuff here. And then we have a bag to put lid in. Right, that's right. So you go ahead and you you, you get the fire started, and I'm gonna go ahead and clean the fish. All right. Tell you what, something's starting to smell good. I tell you what, watch this, Barn. You ready? Yeah. How does that look? Oh, that's starting to look good, isn't it? Man. Huh? Nicky, it smells so good out here. Oh, I know. Everything's on fresh green clover, <laughs> Byron. Yeah. Doesn't get any better than this. It's true. As long as some cows don't come and want to eat with us, you know? That's right. This is going to be good. It is. Let's season those fish up and get them cooking. Boy, I tell you what, this is fantastic. There's a fish right there, Nick. Oh, well, how you want me to do this? Do it any way you want to do it.
Yeah. Well, we sure had a good little time in that little pit, huh, Nicky? Tell you what, Barn. I mean, they had some fish in there. Now, Barn, that's our first little batch out. Uh -huh. Ready to sample. So we're gonna get us a cold Coke or something and eat. Start frying those fish. All right. That sounds good, Nick. Pretty, huh? Oh, that's beautiful. All right, Nick. Here we go, Barn. Ready? I'm ready. And hey, we're cooking these little ones first. You know, Nicky, those, those, those big sacks that we got won't even fit in that pot. No, not at all. <laughs> How does that look? Listen to it. Mm. I can smell it. I tell you what, The guy down that bar, that yeah. Uh, bar. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're about to run him crazy. He's, he's just about to go crazy. The wind's blowing that direction, Nicky. I tell you what, you don't think he's going to want to come up here and eat? Oh, I know he is. I he's know he is. Well, we invite him to eat with us. Well, he's, I think he's going to come. That's the way to do it, Nick. Nicky, I want you to take a look at it right now. Get on in. Look at that. They're not, they're not quite ready, Nick. See? Nope. It'll be a little while longer. But, uh... They're starting to float? Yeah. This, all it got to do is brown. I know. I'm going to tell you what. This is a way to do it. You come out on the bayou bank. You know we've been talking about this for a long time. You come out and get your mess of fish. Fry them right here on the bayou bank. And try and find somebody that wants to come eat with us. That's right. I think those guys might want to come eat there. Well, I'll tell you what. I mean, we got more fish and we just absolutely know what to do with, you know? That's right. I think I see two people down there that want to come eat with us. You think so? <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you what, if, if, if they knew how good this is, going to be, I promise you, it's going to, this is fantastic. Doesn't get any better. That's what Linda Cornett says. You hear, hear about Linda's turkey? Yeah, Linda killed a big old turkey. Uh, Jane. Buto. And you know, Linda was Dan using those, kill one. You know, they were using those Primos call. You know the one that advertised on the show? Right. That's what they were using. Is it a mouth call? No, it's a box call. It is? Yeah. So, well, look. Congratulations to them. Talk about it. Look, Nick, let's wait about five more minutes and then I want to, then we're going to show our viewers what uh, the fish look out when they, when they come out and they're golden brown. Okay. You having fun? I'm hungry, Barn. I'm ready to eat. <laughs> Come on. I'm ready to eat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to get some more of these ready. Think it'll hold three? I doubt it, huh? Yeah, probably so. Yeah, let's put three in there because I'm hungry too. All right. Let's see what these are looking like. Look at those. I'm starting to look good. They're turning brown. They really are. Take your, uh, your spoon there, Nicky. Uh, you got clove on it? No. Nope. You, you don't have any... Uh... I got that from Neil Sandoz at J.B. Sandoz. Oh, okay. And I tell you what, they, they have three different sizes. But I found out this is the best size. Burn. Those fish are done. They're getting burnt. Look at that. Let's see. Look. Oh, yeah, Nicky. Now, the good thing about this spoon is what? We'll pick up all three at one time. Let them drain there. And at the same time, I'm going to do this. Ooh. You think your grease is out or not? It's just right, Nick. You ready for that third one? Yeah. It's just right. That. That's how to do it, huh, Nick? How you do that? All right. Close the show. All right. How was it? Fantastic, Nicky. Fish are great. Had a good fishing trip. And uh, now.
now we're fixing to take off. We're going to eat our fish. We're going to take a nap under the boat for about 20 or 30 minutes. We're going to go on back out and fish a few more satellites. All right, well, let's eat. Hope everybody enjoyed it. And make sure, uh, the old saying, Nikki, it's not, uh, it's not, today was not a catch and release, it's catch and grease. But, you know, a lot of times when you go out like that, you, you catch what you need to eat and let the rest go back, you know? And that's what we're doing today. Right. Sounds good. Nikki, Pedro, absolutely wonderful. Thank you, Byron. Thank you, Nikki. See you later. All right, buddy. How's that fish? Great. You know, a while ago I was telling you, people from all over probably smell this fish. Nicky, look down that levee down there. You think there. it's like it's like cats coming to a fish? Yeah. I'm looking down the levee, I see my two buddies down there. We met them fishing, so we invited them to come eat with us. They had to smell it, you know? They had to smell it. Knew we were cooking. So we're going to introduce y'all to them in just a few minutes. Let me see what these look like, Nick. Yep. Looking good. Okay, TV show. Yeah, Nick. Nick, who's your friends at? Uh, introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Carter. I work for Bayou Edge. I'm a fleet manager. A fleet manager? I'm Robert Sam. I'm uh huh. Over there too. In All the right. Beginning. All right, what I want to say is we met these two gentlemen this morning fishing. And uh, what was the words? I, they didn't have any fish in this place. <laughs> I told you there wasn't no fish on that side of where we were on, fishing. Uh -huh. On that south side. We, most time we were fishing this pond, we always fish on well, that side. Well, right. Y'all invited for dinner. How does that sound? That sounds real good, but I tell you one thing. Just give me I'm the very disappointed. At home. <laughs> I'm very disappointed. You're disappointed, didn't huh? didn't catch no fish. Now, you think you didn't catch no fish, you're looking at box. <laughs> it's true, huh? A barn? Huh? Oh, yeah, we showed our viewers a fish, so. How you like those fish? That's nice, huh? And that's what you call a nice fish, Take huh? Take it home and put it on my wall. I'm telling you, huh? <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all want to try our fish and see? Uh... Yeah, we'll try our fish. Y'all want to see if our cooking is as good as uh... as our fishing? Well, we're about a mile out of living. I know it got to be good because we're smelling it all Y'all can down. smell it down there? I told Nicky we can, y'all can smell it. <laughs> <laughs> I said, I heard it did a bell when it rolled. There you go. <laughs> now, you know, ain't that pretty? Yeah, that's pretty. Just grab your cook out of there. We, we, call life. we ain't doing it formal. We're just no, doing No, no, there ain't nothing formal here now. We're doing it informal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Thank you, sir. Oh, oh you're, you're welcome. quite welcome. I'll tell you what. Now, if it's not any good, Blame him. Y'all blame me. We hope everyone has enjoyed this week's edition of the Acadiana Outdoor Show. Remember, whether you're on the water or in the woods, the role you play as a sportsman is how others see it. We hope everyone's next outdoor adventure is a good one. And don't forget, if you kill or catch something, that's a bonus. Until next week, I'm David McKinnon for Byron Briggs and the Acadiana Outdoor Show. Keep on camping. Welcome to this week's edition of Acadiana Outdoors. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes as your host, Byron Briggs and Nikki Dejan, bring you up to date on what's happening in the outdoor world. Whether we're fishing for big bass, chasing boss gobblers, or after that elusive Boone and Crockett buck, stay tuned for an outdoor adventure you won't forget. And here's your host, Byron Briggs. As you can see, it's not 30 degrees. It's comfortable. Sun's about to break out. We're ready to go. Let's go get them, man. Give me that camera. Quit taking the picture, man. Give me that camera. <laughs> Give me that. Mm, mm, mm. Now we're ready. Okay. This time we're going to add two. The tape that we showed you about a month ago, a couple of months ago, I'm going to take you from the beginning to the end. Young Felix Otapavi, uh, my landlord, I might say, uh, is backing my boat down, making me awfully nervous. And we're over here once again at the uh, Shadows Landing, which is really a fine place on Toledo Bend. And it's uh, uh, pretty, pretty good weather today for fishing. It's overcast, a little drizzling, and we're going to go out and show you um, how we attack Toledo Bend and 
and what this bass fishing is all about. So just hang on for a second, we'll get this boat down, and then we'll move on and go to our hot spots, and hopefully we can show you some fishing on Toledo Bend with various types of uh, fishing rig. And you've got some good fishermen here today, uh, not me, uh, but, uh, but Mr. Pavi, who's an avid fisherman in the Ambassador Club. Matter of fact, here comes Mr. Pavi now. And uh, also, uh, not being prejudiced, but my brother's a, an excellent bass fisherman. And if you don't think so, just ask him, he'll tell you. Okay, Jimmy's backing his boat off the trailer. We have a beautiful afternoon. It's about 4.30, 4.35. About 30 minutes ago, we had a slight shower that should have cooled things off. It's overcast. There's a little breeze blowing. Nice ripple on the water out on the can lake. We get to the, uh, can we get to the trailer from uh, the water? Okay, um, just for the viewing audience, you hear a lot of talk about the French fry. If you can, Fop, can you just zoom in and show them what this little French fry is here? This little green thing, it kind of looks like a, uh, one of the little crinkle uh, French fries. That's what they call the French fry. You'll notice that I'm fishing a Carolina rig. You heard uh, Pompey talking about a Carolina rig. You see the sinkers up here and about 24 inches or two feet. You see the hook and then the Carolina rig. And you use a stiff pole and you take that and that's when you want to get it out. If you can, if you can picture out, you can uh, show the, um, the viewing audience what that point looks like. We want to fish this point. And um, what we'll do, fish this point because they have some little grass beds and fish the point on the, with the Carolina rig. Let's see what we can do. Now you take it and you let it go all the way to the bottom, and then you just kind of bump it along, bump it along, bump it along, reel down. Always be feeling because uh, with a Carolina rig, it's a little different from a regular worm rig because that sinker is up on the front part of the hook, about two feet off the hook. So uh, sometimes you get some funny feeling and you, you don't get much warning. And if you don't set the hook right at the right time, the fish will pick up the worm and spit it right back out and then you, uh, you've lost the fish and you become quite angry. So, uh, okay, that'll take care of the French, French fry. Let, let's try something else. I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, switch on over to a regular worm. The difference between a Carolina rig, if you'll notice, and the worm is that the sinker, this black sinker, floating sinker here, this, this sinker just moves up and down, but it's right on the hook. Now, this is the same color you'll notice on the, uh, as the French fry, because they like that, 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 uh, that chartreuse uh, black and sort of like pepper look and they like that so that's a regular what they call a Texas rig let me swing it around so we can stay on that point swing it around and work that Texas rig now this is just a little bit different because the, the, the weight is right on the front so we'll go ahead and throw that on out and when it hits pull out a little bit of line because we are in I think what uh, eight feet of water let it go down and when you see it hits the bottom then uh, then just kind of work it bump it along and then reel down. As you can tell, it's getting a little windy out here, so uh, we may have to go a little bit in, into the coals, because this lake can really be tough on you. You gotta respect it, because when that weather kicks up, if you're not careful, you can sink a boat or get struck by lightning out here, or strike a log and, uh, and hurt yourself. There are a lot more boating accidents than people give credit for, and the, the bad thing is that you got a lot of people that are on the water I find more people drink and drive boats than drink and drive cars. And for some reason, other people don't realize how dangerous it is in a boat. And it's just as dangerous, for, dangerous if not more, than in a car. All right, but we didn't get much on that. Let's try another lure to show the, uh, the audience other things. Later on in the afternoon, this is what's called a buzz bait, uh, a lunker lure buzz bait. Str crazy looking contraption here. Anything that's got a uh, big blade on it and that makes noise on top of the water, they call that a buzz bait. We'll try that. And we just throw that out. I, when, I, when I throw it out, see if you can get a hold to it on the, on, the, uh, on the water. See the action of it. Can you see it out there? Can you pick it up? I'm going to run it. Can you see it? So you just run that over the top of the water, over these moss beds. And if you can run it over those moss beds, boy, those fish will come up from underneath that grass and hit it, and it'll just knock the heck out of it. Hey, here we go. Try it again. See if you can pick it up out there. With that buzz bait, you want to just run it on top of the water. Skim it right over the water, over the grass bed. 
see Brother Robert over there? He's, he's working. Uh, he's working the shallow area. Get a get a shot of Brother Robert over there. Can you see him? Zoom in with the wide angle. You might need the wide angle, but just zoom in for, for Brother Robert. I don't know what he's doing, but he certainly has a theory about what he's doing. All right. Let's try another type of uh, lure that we use sometimes called a spinner bait. Very popular bait to fish uh, in grass beds and in uh, uh, a little bit more shallow water. This is a crazy looking spinner bait. I bought this uh, spinner bait this color. I don't know why. I personally don't like fishing spinner bait, so it doesn't make any difference which color I fish with. But a spinner bait, you throw it out and it'll run about 18 inches below the water, or you can let it sink further and just pull it in real slowly and try and do it over the grass beds. it out there and just let it go down and just work it in over the grass bed. Sometimes these fish are hidden underneath the grass and they, um, they'll they come up and get it from underneath the grass. Okay, uh, Brother Robert, what you fishing with? Uh, rattle trap, James. Rattle trap, um, all right, what you fishing over this grass bed coming out of this point? Let's see what you got. Let's show the viewing audience what a rattle trap is. That's a very, very popular uh, lure used by a lot of people. It's a good all-around, all-purpose lure. You can cover a lot of territory. Yeah. That right, Fran? Yeah. Guess so, huh? Yeah, I don't know. I'm running. All right, let's catch some fish. Enough of this filming. Okay, we finally got the boats in the water, and here comes Mr. James T. Genovez. We're getting ready to get on the lake. In about five or ten minutes, we'll be fishing. He's idling the boat out. We're in a no-wake zone right now. We're fishing out of Shadows Landing at Toledo Bend. Well, here we are. You ready? Ready to go. All right, let's roll, man. Let's, let's do a good take this time. We've got to be able to do better than Byron and Nicky. Let's get the uh, Pillsbury Doughboy over here. You know the Michelin man, my, my brother Robert? Uh, here he comes. I, I knew if he knew we had the camera on him, he'd be around here to, to smile. He probably doesn't know we're taking his picture. But, uh, uh, now, Pop is fishing out of a uh, 285 XL Pro Stratus from Wayne's Marine. It's almost as good looking as Pop is. I believe when we fished in that Donnie Paul tournament. But now we're going out to the uh, a little area we call the uh, trash pile. And that's where uh, Brother Robert caught those nice fish. Uh, either that or he bought them and he's lying about them. But we're going to put him to the test. And now we're entering into Negree Creek. The big part of the lake is over there. It's overcast, about uh, 75 degrees, 80 degrees. And we're going, we're heading back into Negree Creek. And you can see the water's nice, it's calm, it looks good. You got his overcast, a little rain. Very good, ideal conditions for bass fishing. If we don't catch bass, there must be something wrong with us. All right, now we're gonna be coming up. If you can scan the picture, uh, the film, back towards up uh, behind you, where Pompey is, that's where the trash pile is. Now, one thing about that, Pop, is that if, if you don't fish this lake and you don't know where it is, you're gonna have a lot of trouble finding these places because this lake is so big and only about 10% of it has fish. The other 90% is nothing but water and you fish and don't catch anything. So you gotta go with either guides or come and fish a lot and find the key spots with your graph or your depth finder. See, that's what Pope is doing right now. He's checking his graph to find this little area called the uh, trash pile. Now you see he's using a, uh, a marker. He's gonna put that marker out. Watch him drop that marker and we're gonna back off and fish that spot. All right, Bob, let's go ahead and cut the tape and do a little fishing and see if we can pick up. Go. You got the 
camera going again? Yes, sir. You know, one thing I forgot to add when that first film, and we have to tell the people in the second film, is that your, your attitude, your mental frame of mind is very important in fishing. You can't come out here and be down on yourself and have bad biorhythms. You have to have a good attitude based on a good, healthy diet, and you have to think fishing. And the best way to have a good, healthy diet is to dig in your, your box and come up with some Keebler's Chips Deluxe. Now, these Chips Deluxe, once you get this high white sugar count in your blood, you can be like a roach on, on a ceiling, and you can just go forever. You can fish and work real well. So next time you're out fishing on Toledo Bend, make sure you get Keebler's Chips Deluxe. <laughs> I don't know how to follow the commercial. OK, now, Pompey, why don't you tell us uh, where you caught those fish yesterday and how you caught them? And don't lie. Bob, I caught the, yesterday the wind was blowing hard from the east, so I had to anchor right out here. We throw in into about 14 feet of water, and we're going to pull off into about 24 feet of water. This is called a dozer pile. A friend of mine showed it to me. I caught those four big fish with the French fry, which is the Zoom chartreuse centipede. And they hit between 6 and 6.30. Uh, I also caught one on a rattle trap, throwing it out and letting it sink to the bottom. But there's no wind today, and they're probably going to bite late because they haven't been doing much all day long. And the weather's been real bad, so you just have to put your Carolina rig on and work it real slow. And uh, I was hoping we'd catch some spotties, some, some uh, Kentuckys, but I haven't caught any here in the last day or so. Now, Pompey, I noticed when you threw that last cast, you started feeding line off your reel. What were you doing? I let it fall straight down. Fall down is its win. Because it'll fall straight down. If you, if you throw out and you don't peel off line, it's going to come back toward you. So, everybody knows that bass fish's nose. you got to peel it off if you want it to uh, fall straight down. What you got, man? Go ahead, man. Where is that? Whoa. Whoa. What? Go ahead, now. That's a spot. What is that? A Kentucky. A Kentucky. Look at that little football fish. Let's see. What you mean by Kentucky? Explain that to the people. Bass, you, see? you think Byron knows what a Kentucky bass is? Oh, Byron don't know shit. Oh, oh <laughs> wait now, wait now, wait. <laughs> I got him hooked. I'm out. That's good. All right, man. Pop, you ready? I'm ready. Okay. Let's see what's happening here. What you doing? Oh, not one. <laughs> Whoa. Where is he? Where is he? Well, wait. That's a big one, huh? Uh-oh. What's that? All right. Well, you're on the board. Heck, a fish is a fish, huh? Now, the regulations say they got to be, what, 14 inches, huh? I believe so. I think that one's That's a little short, huh? About seven, maybe. Okay. We'll multiply that by two, and we'll be, we'll be ready to go. But you're on the board. Practice, practice. I'll catch, photograph, and release. That's right. 14 inches, and we've got an eight, eight uh, limit. You know, I think it's CCF, you know, catch, <laughs> clean, and fry, you know? <laughs> all right. Yes, when, when all things fail and you're not catching many fish, the best thing to do on Toledo Bend is to bring your own entertainment. That is, your wife. Yeah, all right. Well, Martha, who could that be over there? I believe that's Herman Stanford. This is my lovely wife, Martha. Hello. And she's over there checking everything, everything out. Well, look who's come along. Any of you guys in the viewing audience know an outlaw by the name of Herman Stanford? I do believe that is he. All right, Herman. What you got for the people back home in Big O? Hello. Whoa, what we got here? About a 10 pounder. 10 pounder multiplied by what? <laughs> good, good, good. Huh? How about your partner? Um, okay, so. All right, see, we're fishing over this moss bed here, trying to um, see if we can get something out of this moss bed off this point here. What you got, Mother? Yeah, what? Is, what? Is, here. What? Know. what? Wait, wait. <laughs> what? We're well, pulling in. Well, I'm trying. I'm well, what? Let's see. What is? Oh, we got enough grass on there. Look at that. That's a nice fish. Get him in. Get him in the boat. 
<laughs> Get him in the boat. Get him in the boat. Come on. Let's see. Hold him up. Hold him over the boat. All right. Well, we're going to have to weigh that. Hold him up. Let's see what we got. Oh, that's a little fat one. That's one of the ones they call a little uh, Kentucky bass. Let's see. Yeah, that's going to be close to 14 inches. But look how fat he is. All right, that's what it's all about. Okay. All right, well, let's let's go ahead and you caught him where? Right off that grass? Yep. Okay, we're going to go ahead and, and uh, try fishing. Uh, what were you fishing with? Let's. I believe uh, I have a French fry. Okay. All right, well, let's see if we can catch a couple of more. Okay, Pompey, I see you back on that dozer pile again. What's happening? Three fish. Huh? Three fish. Three fish over 14 inches? Yeah. You caught them there this afternoon? Uh, yeah. Who's that uh, little girl in the boat? Uh, if I take that, my daughter, but that's my wife. You babysitting again? Babysitting again. Or just robbing the cradle? Uh, doing everything. <laughs> All right, well, I'm waiting for you to catch a fish now. Yeah. Not when that's really big. All right. Well, we're going to see that when we take the aggregate. Tippy. All right, Martha, hold on. Wait, I think I got a hit. Wait, where are you, Jimmy? What do you have? Well, I'm trying to catch a fish. What you trying to do? Hold on, man. I can't tell a fish from a boat. Wait a minute. Well, you have a big one. All right, there you go. Don't read them all the way up, not Kim. Hey, man, what you want me to do? Give them canard over there. <laughs> hey, that's 14 inch fish. <laughs> What'd you catch him on, Jimmy? The only thing that works around here, this ugly looking French fry. That's, yeah. Hey, man. Hey, that's, you that's, put me on the map. hold on, look down, look down here. That's 14 inches. Sure, yeah. It's 14 inch. Okay, oh, now. Nah. See? All right, that's good. All right, let's go. Let's... Okay. Uh, good morning. I believe it's uh, yeah, May 29th, Saturday morning. Give you a couple of pointers on uh, what we do early in the morning. It's about 6.15, and that's the trailer we're staying at, at uh, Shadows. And you can see those are the boat stalls, and... That would be the, the launch area over there. It's a Saturday morning, May 29th. Water's starting to come down. The weather's settling down and a lot of boats on the water. It's just a beautiful sight. I, I hope this camera can capture all the, the beauty it is to be out on this lake when it's calm like glass and it's early in the morning and you're waiting for those, those bass to tear the top of that water up over those grass beds on those points. We're going to head on out this morning and um, show you what it's like to be on this lake in the morning. It really is a beautiful place, this Toledo Bend. All right, I'm, I'm by myself this morning, so I'm gonna have to do the camera work and drive at the same time. But we're all set to go. We're gonna putter on out, because this is a no-wake zone, and uh, we're heading out to the shadows, and I'm looking out now uh, toward the, the open part of the lake. Uh, I may go out there later on if it stays this calm. When it's calm, you can get out on that nice part of the lake and you can just go anywhere you want. You can come out on the Greek Creek, which is about four miles south of the uh, Pendleton Bridge Dam. I mean, not dam, Pendleton Bridge uh, Marina, which is a bridge on Highway 6 crossing over into Texas. And, um, you know, with a beautiful lake like this, it, it really, it hasn't been developed the way it should, but it's, it's getting developed. It's starting to spend some money up here. Now that we have the interstate highway and we can, we can zip on down here, you can almost access this lake in two, two hours and 45 minutes uh, driving reasonably and, and taking your time. And, and you can have interstate highway all the way up to Natchitoches, which is about uh, 120 miles from Opelousas. Um, where we go up here to Shadows, it's about 160 miles. And so you only have about 35, 40 miles of, uh, of two late two-lane highway and, and um, it's not that bad and now that the state of Louisiana through the Sabine River Authority uh, they're starting to spend some money up here they're starting to uh, put some blacktop on some roads and it's really starting to happen uh, this place I don't think is fished enough uh, by a lot of people I don't think they really know about it they hear about it they know that Toledo Bend is up here but 
they don't really take advantage of it. This is a wonderful place. I mean, you can duck hunt up here. You can catch all the sackle you want. Uh, you can fish for striped bass, which is, uh, they call them stripers. And man, that is really a kick. I, I've never gotten into that, but it's really a kick. I mean, you want to get a, a, a 15 pound bass on your line and, and, and bring that in. It, it's quite an experience. Uh, this, is, this is a trophy lake for, for bass fishing. You have people that, that fish down here, come down here to fish from all over the United States. Plus the fact that, uh, okay, there's some fishermen out there. And, uh, I don't know who those people are, but we'll zoom in and see. They're out here pretty early because it's about 6.20. It's 5.23, but actually that's one hour uh, early. They probably, you see, they're fishing up close um, in, that, in that little protected waterway. There they are. They're probably throwing top water, maybe a buzz bait. That's kind of like a spinner bait, uh, zipping it fast over the top. Now we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna come around and, and, and head into uh, back into the Greek Creek. I, I hate to go back into the Greek Creek all the time, but that's where the fish are. And if you you, you got to get to know a place here because this, this lake is so big, so vast that that uh, there's the open part of the lake out there. You can see beautiful, beautiful area. But remember, you got to wear your life jacket. No drinking and driving. And you got to be careful on this lake because there are a lot of stumps that are hidden. The water level can go up as much as, uh, oh, they control it about four or five feet. And uh, areas you think are safe, you hit a log going fast and you're not watching what you're doing, you can flip a boat. You can really kill yourself or hurt yourself or your passengers. And boat safety is very, very important because you don't have to have a boat license, you don't have to take driver's training or anything. Or if you got the money or you can just get in a boat and just go, you just go and and that's why it's, uh, there really should be more restrictions. You, you ought to have to pass a test to, to get a boat license because there's just a lot of people on, on, on the water that, that uh, don't know the rules and regulations and it can be dangerous. Now remember, this lake is a, a lake that has a, an, a creel limit. That means a maximum number of bass of eight and they have to be 14 inches. Now I'm, I'm, gonna, I, I'm gonna pass these people fishing. I'll just zoom in a little bit to let you, I don't even know who these people are. But um, to show you that you should be courteous to people when they're fishing, be courteous to them. Don't go by them fast and make a big wake. Because that might be you and you might be fishing and you might have some, well, I can't use that on, uh, on tape, but you might have somebody coming around that, uh, that just uh, passes you fast, creates a big wake and just very discourteous. So, so be, be courteous to people on the lake and, and be careful above all means. I just had to come back on and show you that sunrise again. See, we made it to this point. That's where I've been fishing this point. I wanted to show you this, uh, this gentleman that's on the right-hand side of me. He's fishing. And uh, notice what he's, he's fishing top water. He's throwing it out. If I can catch it and watch him. Watch him work it across the top of the water. See his bait right there? He's working right over those grass beds. See him? You see that bait just, just jumping and skipping right over those grass beds, waiting for that bass to come on out and hit it. He's throwing it pretty far out. Working it right by the tree. See how he's fishing it, he's twitching it up and down. Always watching that bait, waiting for that strike to set that hook.
the other people have the same idea as we do. Pushing these points. I'm going to zoom in and try and see if I can show you what it looks like underwater. If you can see the, uh, the grass underneath the water. This is what it looks like. You can see the, the grass on top of the water and it's growing underneath the water too. And those fish love to get up in and underneath there, especially in a summertime pattern. And you just go and run, run your lure right over there. You just spin a bait, light crank bait or, or top water bait. They've been doing well with top water lately, so that's what I'm going to try. Okay, uh, we've about used all of the uh, time we got on the camera, and uh, since we've done such a, uh, a good job, I guess, for Byron, hopefully he's recovering from the, his surgery very well. Uh, you know, before we close this thing down, I got some friends, and I, I bet you all do too, they probably thought we caught or bought one fish, and every time we showed a picture or video of us catching a fish, that we use this one fish over and over again. I, I know, I, I know I got some people who, who feel that way. But uh, just for those doubting people who don't trust us and don't think that we know how to fish, you think we ought to show them something? Let's show them. Yeah. yeah, come on, let's show them something. Check this out. What you say we go get some more, huh? Let's do it. Let's All do it. right. We hope everyone has enjoyed this week's edition of the Acadiana Outdoor Show. Remember, whether you're on the water or in the woods, the role you play as a sportsman is how others see it. We hope everyone's next outdoor adventure is a good one. And don't forget, if you kill or catch something, that's a bonus. Until next week, I'm David McKinn for Byron Briggs and the Acadiana Outdoor Show. Keep on camping, and we'll see you this week's edition of Acadiana Outdoors. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes as your host, Byron Briggs and Nikki Dejan, bring you up to date on what's happening in the outdoor world. Whether we're fishing for big bass, chasing boss gobblers, or after that elusive Boone and Crockett buck, stay tuned for an outdoor adventure you won't forget. And here's your host, Byron Briggs. Welcome to another KDN Outdoor Show. Nicky, how you been doing, buddy? Hey, Byron. Good. I'm glad to see you up and around. Oh, yeah, I tell you what, though. I'm doing good, and I'm ready to start fishing. You are? Yeah. I tell you what, it's been boring without you. Oh, I, I know that. I've been fishing with Jerry Chamberlain. Yeah. And Is he a good fisherman? No. He's really, <laughs> he's really not? You know, no. this morning he called me and said you were about the same. So i got to find out. Which well, one? when he goes up to a big treetop to uh -huh. fish in it, See, he's in the front of the boat. Yeah. And he rams the front of the boat in the treetop. And, and scares I'm all the fact, fish away. scares the fish away. And then he says, I'm a bad fisherman because I can't catch any fish. Mm. So that's why he says you're yeah, not good. Yeah, that's not fair. No, it's not. It's not fair. <laughs> um, <laughs> let's talk about a, a new sponsor we have, David Pahaska. David Pahaska is a fine fellow. Isn't he, though? Yeah. He has a company called R&D Spray. It's research and development. Mm -hmm. uh, you kind of familiar with what yeah. he does? Uh, he researches all the chemicals for these big companies. Her for herb yeah, for the uh, big companies, the herbicide abilities of yeah. different chemicals, uh, and uh, he's an expert on it. He consults with uh, farmers on uh, when to put certain chemicals down to keep good, have good weed control, and things like that. But he is a he's a big hunter and fisherman himself. Plus, he's a nice guy. Yeah. So if any of the farmers need any help with their Oh, yeah. Uh, they can call David at R&D, and they can get them fixed up. That's right. Five or ten days one way or the other, yeah. putting a chemical down might make or break the crop. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a good thing to, to know. He's a, he's, a good, uh, he's a good guy to consult when it comes to putting chemical down, too. Yeah. We want to have him on the show. I tell you what, Nicky, in the next, um, we have dove season coming up in, you know, in a month or so, and uh, we want to uh, ask David to come on and talk about uh, bird eye and different things like right. that, what to look for. So we're going to ask David to come on the show. Um, let's see what else we have. Um, oh, Scott Pete just uh, bought uh, Dave's gun shop. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and we want to remind our viewers that uh, anybody needs a, uh, to see about uh, some guns, they go on well, over there. Well, you know, once you brought up the subject, I saw that uh, gas-operated browning you had mm -hmm. re-blue. Right. 
And uh, I tell David you Farnham's what, working over there. Man. Isn't that something? Terrific. Oh, that yeah. looks like a brand new gun. Brand new gun. I tell you, Blast thought it was a new gun. Right. So, so if you, that's the thing to do yeah. now before hunting season gets It's true. Get, get your guns ready. Let's talk about our other sponsor, and we, then we're going to go to Key West, Florida. Right. Uh, we want... All, we want to remind our viewers to try and patronize our, our, our sponsors on the show because if it wouldn't be for the sponsors, we, we couldn't bring this show. show to you. We have Regional Ambulance Service, right. of course, everybody knows that. St. Andrew Bank. Right. Thrifty Ways. Right, Ken and Carl. That's right. Uh, DC Pontiac. Right. And LeBlanc Chamberlain Martin. Right. And Jude Martin has a, a big part to do with that sponsorship. I mean, he's, oh, Jude? Really, oh, yeah, he's uh, really interested in this show right here. Man, that's great. So man, I wanted to We say appreciate him watching it. it, too. Yeah. Um, what else we got, Nick? Where'd you get that shirt? That's what mm -hmm. I want to know. Well, this is another one of our sponsors, Primos. Yeah. Uh, game calls? Right. Primos makes every kind of wild game call for any kind of game in North America, from coyotes to yeah. crows and the yeah. ducks, geese, and ducks uh, anything. squirrel, yeah. moose, elk, uh, anything like that. And uh, Primos is a super good uh, company to deal with. All Primos. right. Primos calls. Primos calls. Okay. That's right. Uh, also, Nikki, let's well, let's go on to Key West. Well, let's talk about it a little bit first. I didn't get invited. Right, I know you did. All right, so y'all won't see me on there. Go Byron, ahead, Nikki. Brian wasn't there, but <laughs> we went. Uh, I went. Dr. D. D. A. Ardwin went, and uh, uh, Jerry Sasher went, and Dr. D. D. Ardwin's uh -huh. wife, Bonnie, went. And, and we they're from Eunice. They're from Eunice. Dr. Ardwin is an oral surgeon who serves this area. Uh, for 25 years, and, and most people know who he is, but uh, we went and stayed at his house in Key West, and we went out fishing, and I'll tell you what we fished for. We fished for a uh, fish called yellowtail snapper, which uh -huh. is probably one of the finest eating fish you can put in your mouth. It's the best tasting fried fish or, or baked fish I've Did ever eaten. Did you bring me one, Nick? No, I didn't bring you one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> go, go ahead. I brought go. back some grouper. Oh, okay. And then uh, we got a, we've got a good uh, part about uh, catching grouper on there. I caught two nice grouper in an area one mile off the shoreline. Right? Oh, it's, and then we have uh, a lot of scenery yeah. of uh, Key West and the island, Margaritaville, where Jimmy Buffett plays all his music and well, good. Well, let's, let's all go that on. kind of stuff. Let's go on that. I'm anxious to see it. And then, and then the, the next day, uh, Jerry Sash was hooked on to a, a sailfish, uh -huh. which is a beautiful fish. Oh, yeah. And the water is deep purple out there. Really? I mean, it's so, it's so clear, it's yeah. unbelievable. Well, I tell you what, I think the closest <laughs> I'll ever get is to, to watch the show. I want you to watch the show because <laughs> it's really pretty down there, Martin. All right, let's go on down to Key West. Right. arrived in Key West, Florida. We on Cujo Key. We're getting ready to go into town and this is Dr. Ardwain's camp. And he has a canal right in front of his camp leading out into the into the Keys. And when I tell you it's a beautiful place, I mean it. Here comes Dr. Sasher. We're getting in the van. We're gonna go take a little ride into the Keys. Hey Jerry, how you doing? Oh man, we're doing great. You ready? Let's go. Okay, this is Jimmy Buffett's store, and then Jimmy Buffett's Margaritaville. He comes down here sometimes. This is the bar. I think he's living up in Nashville, Tennessee now. Thank you. So this is our next place of enjoyment, the Hog Breath Saloon. I'm coming. My leader is Bonnie Ardwin. Some people call me the 
Eggman. I'm not the Eggman. I am the walrus. Ooh, kunk Oh, you guys are fading in participation. But I want you to outdo yourself this time. You're in Key West. Make some noise and have some fun. It gives me great pleasure to introduce the stars of our show. They've been training and rehearsing all week just to perform for you tonight. So let's all put our hands together in a big way to give our stars a nice Key West welcome. Let's hear it, Mark. Everybody, thank you. Hello, come up to the room. Tell your neighbor, come up. Never done that. Brenda, watch out for the tail. These are just some yeah. of the things you'll see in the Key West. <laughs> this is the sunset on Key West, right, Jerry? That's it. Welcome to Acadian Outdoors. We are in uh, Key West, Florida. We're on Cujo Key right now, and today I'm the guest of Dr. D.A. Arquan and his beautiful wife, Bonnie. And uh, if you look in the background, you'll see the palm trees blowing in the wind. So in a little while, I'll introduce my guest, and uh, we'll tell y'all what we're going to be fishing for. The temperature today is about 70 to 80 degrees, but the wind's blowing pretty hard today. And we're going to go fish on the east side of the islands and see what we can come up with. Maybe some snapper or some uh, tarpon, right? In the flats. We're, in the, the we're going to be fishing in the flats. Uh, on my left is Jerry Sashry, Didi Ardway, and Bonnie. And, uh, uh, they my guests today. Oh, I'm their guest You're today. Their guest. Yeah, I'll cut all that out. <laughs> I'm their guest today, and we're getting ready to take off here. And of course, everybody's putting on their sunscreen. We're gonna be fishing with live shrimp and uh, oh. what's Jeff, the name uh, of those other baits? And live no uh, glass minnows. We're gonna be fishing with uh, using glass minnows for chum, right? Right. And uh, live shrimp. Live bait. Y'all ready to go? You bet. Ready to fight them out. Let's do it. That's Dr. Ardwan's camp right there in Bonnie's. And this is the little slip going into the little harbor. I can't tell you how pretty it is down here. And like I say, the wind's blowing. It's got a pretty good blow today. Uh, you can just run going out. It would be protected. It might get choppy right at the very end. But it's it might be all back. What a beautiful place, huh? Yeah. It's just one of the slips on this little island right here that they cut into the coral reef. All these islands are coral reefs, right, Didi? Yeah. Oh, and my house is for rent, too. <laughs> right, that's another. Well, what we do is we're going to talk about that on the show because. Oh, I'm going to do, do a little short deal on the inside of the camp. I already got the outside. Palm trees, beautiful flowers. All the palm trees are full of coconuts. Look at this dog, look at this dog out there. Isn't that amazing? But no one's out there to uh, call him in. No, he did it on his own. The chum is overboard, right? Yeah, chum bag. Chum bag. We don't use that in Louisiana, but we use it in Florida. Round up fish for chum. Set up a chum slick to attract the fish. If you use that in Louisiana, you'll attract a bunch of sharks, right?
first fish hey, of the you day. Can, you can line my hands. Yeah. I'll go either way. Well, no. Uh, okay, let's see what the chum bag chums up, right? I hope so. Thank you. It's the Florida Marine Patrol. I just wanted to look and see. Remember the people? What you think he is, Jerry? Little snapper? Keep him for bait. Keep him to eat. I don't, I don't believe. Go ahead and take him over back. I'll tell you what, you can sit in and catch these things one after another. You got him, Bonnie. A little grouper? Yeah. Ice group. Let's see. Gag group. All right. Gag group. That's a good eating one, right? Yeah. Sure is. If he's 20 inches long. Yeah. All right. That's some one of the first big pieces of meat on the boat, right? Right. Except for that little, what was it? A little uh, barracuda we missed a while ago. Let's measure. No, we don't want to measure more. Nice Gray snapper, a mutton snapper. Pretty good. Is that a keeper? Not bad for an amateur. You're right, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a keeper. So that's here we keeper. are in the Keys fishing. We're catching snapper. We just caught that big grouper. Now we're looking for a tarpon, right? <laughs> we hadn't seen any tarpon rolling, though. Not tarpon, uh, barracuda. Back, we got some barracuda. Here's some pretty little islands. See your flats. I don't know if you can make out shallow water here and we had a little channel between the flats. We're trying to catch fish as the, as the tide goes out and the bait fish come up off the flats. This is a paradise out here. It's windy as hell. Oh, excuse me, it's very windy. <laughs> yeah, we're on. Alright. Seems like I'm the only one catching fish besides Bonnie, huh? Is that some more bait fish? No, another, another, snapper. another little gray snapper. Okay. All right, now we got to go for the big one. Yeah. Now use that for bait. Right. Oh, finally, Dr. Jerry got one what on. What you got, Jerry? Nice one, man. I'm not a good cameraman. Okay, that's a good Goes. No. Okay, off. folks, <laughs> this afternoon we're going out again and we're going to give it another try. So tell us bye, Pelican. <laughs> you got to have a fish. <laughs> <laughs> He's working on that one. It's hard to get it down, huh? We're now we're kind of into the sun. Oh, yeah. That's a nice one. Yellowtail snapper. Yes, we're on a little patch reef out here about three miles offshore on the Atlantic side this afternoon. And we do have the same crew though. We changed locations, but unfortunately we got the same crew. We had to go to town and buy a new chum bag. got a chum bag. Because chum bag, bag Dejean Threw it away. I did, didn't I? Yeah, you did. <laughs> but we'll let you get away with it this yeah, time. Have to buy a new one, though. Alright, well let's catch some fish here. Okay, we will. Well we just started good. A little grouper. A little grouper. Hold him up yeah, there. Too small. Yeah. But a nice pretty little grouper. Well, it is our arrangement. It's twenty inches. It's gotta be twenty inches. Right in the sun, huh? Yeah. Oh, nice man. Yeah, nice mango snap. Gray snap, also known as gray snap. 
What is it, Barney? Mangrove snapper. All right. Pan fry. Pan fry. See you, Barney. Another mangrove. Oh, that's nice. Another keeper. I tell you what. I don't know what you guys are going to eat tonight, but I know what I'm having. This is all sure. delicacy eating, right? Right. Jerry, what you got there at the bottom? I got a big one. What you catching, Doc? I'm trying to ground a shrimp. Uh, <laughs> All right, let's let's. I'm trying to see how I can keep them in the water without a fish biting on it. Right. I'm, I'm doing pretty good too. <laughs> Got the neck on a big barracuda. What's he doing? She's taking line. Still taking line? Might have to set the drag a little. Choppy. Getting close with him? No, I don't want him to break. Okay. Oh, it's a big All right. All right. Nick thought he had a barracuda here. We have a big grouper. Keeper. Dr. Didi's going to gas him. Gorgeous fish. Woo! Go ahead. Go ahead. Is that good eating? No. Woo, we're going to eat well tonight. How about that? Leave that 20 in. You got it that's on record? That's gorgeous. Let's see. Give it. Wait, wait. Yeah, yeah. It's wide angle, Nick. Looks big Let's as it see. can be. Oh, no. Yeah, throw throw him back. back. No. Uh-uh. Good job. Go ahead. How much you think he'll weigh, Dee Dee? Huh? He's How 30. 36 inches. How much you think he weighs? How much I think he weighs? He must weigh a good 35 pounds. I got a scale up in the front. I'll get to it in a minute. Well, That's better than a better than a barracuda. Let the man fish for the big one. Just get out of my way. I'm Turn off the camera. He'll ham it in the fish now. And fish it's a big one. Stop. Stop. Twenty-six. Twenty-six pounds well, for Nick. He was right. What did you say, Nick? Twenty-six. Secret about mutton and snapper. You have a tendency to jump when the wave comes. Oh. <laughs> the mangrove snapper. There you go. It's a little mangrove snapper, right? Not little. Just mangrove snapper. All right. He caught one big fish, and now everybody else is fishing. Oh, by the way, we forgot to tell you. What's that, Barney? After you catch a fish over 25 pounds, uh -huh. you can Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a nice one. Mangrove, mangrove. That's a nice one, huh? Sure. That's gourmet eating right there. It's got some teeth, too. Sure, can you see his teeth or not? Look closely. He's trying to bite you, too. Yeah. Right? He's trying to bite you. Yes, sir. Stuck a hook in here trying to bite me too. <laughs> the next got another fish on here. Oh, he's coming up. He's coming up. Yeah, he's not as big as the last one. Might not be a grouper. Yeah, he's still. Oh no, it's a grouper. That's it's a grouper. grouper. Got him on a live pin fish. It's a grouper. Hey, that's mine, Nick. Okay, where's the gaff? Bonnie, you want a gaff? Yeah. Right here. Oh, he's barely hooked. He's barely hooked? Yeah. Get him, give me an expert. In the gills. Keep him in the water. Ah. Oh, slip it in his mouth, like. Good idea. Go in his gills. Well, let me Watch show you something. Hook. All right, he'll get the fish out of the water here. Oh, yeah. 24. What's up? Twenty three and a half. We made about three and a half inches. Another nice fish. He's gonna be bringing some meat back to Appaloosa's, uh, so don't worry, Mama. Well, that that fish is mine because I caught the pin fish that she used for bait there. Watch me drop him in the water. Hey, Jerry, trying to weigh him. Nice fish. Pin it here. I'm put my cheaters on. What's our weight here? I'll say six. Six. 
you not. You see those down. Jimmy. Okay, y'all, let's end it our first day of fishing. We did all right, didn't we? We did very good. Did all right. A bunch of mangrove snapper, one yellowtail, two real nice grouper. Jerry caught a great big grouper. And I just lost a big no, barracuda. No, I caught all Nicky's bait fish. Yeah. If it wasn't for me, Nicky wouldn't have caught a thing. And I griped a lot. No, you didn't, Bonnie. No, no. And it's cool and the wind's blowing and we get ready to get wet going on. Good morning, Bonnie. Good morning. Or should I say, good morning, Bonnie. I'm not speaking to any of you because I'm not <laughs> fishing. Well, Jerry, you ready to go fishing today? Ready to get it, Nick. We'll catch some big ones today. Here's our boat, the spin drift. Where's our tee? Well, as Dr. Ardwin <clears throat> rigging up, we're ready, huh, Doc? Huh? Yeah, oh yeah. Answer me when I talk to you. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you might not want to hear what I answer you. Two fish we fishing for out here, uh, or two? Permit tarpon. Permit is like a. Okay. Permit, highly prized game fish. See, I'm a voice over all this stuff later. I just need to remember what it is. And tarpon. Just threading line out, letting it drift? Yeah, when you feel something, take it in. It's not reeling, don't it? Don't yank like a bass fisherman. Well, I can tell you one thing, it's a pretty day today. Now, huh, Jerry? What are you? Our captain today is R.T. Trossett on the spin drift, right, R.T.? Pretty deep in front of her, huh? Yeah, went straight down and jumped. Uh, uh, from it. Might be a little tall, but huh? <laughs> tell you what, it's no easy job fighting those fish. I'm gonna tell you right now, she's got a fight <laughs> belt on.
person in the frame. That's what it is. What do you say? <laughs> Was this just a shrimp in hard bar tea? Yeah, this is a um, safe harbor they call it. Shrimp boats come here and unload. And they uh, uh, take the piece of that rope and just put it to one of the cables there. Tie us off. That's lobster traps back there, right? <coughs> yeah, I work. Is lobster season open still? No, it's closed. That's why we're all Well, now, RT, now we've got some quiet time. You want to tell me about your boat? Oh, wait a minute. Let me get organized here. <laughs> Can I introduce you? Our tea's kind of bashful. <laughs> Not generally, but I'm. Now I'll get all. I'll take all this bad stuff off. Yeah, I know that. You think? <laughs> yeah, really. Who's your sponsor? Suzuki, Pin Reels. Suzuki and Pin Reels. You know, we meet all those guys at the uh, Ciopa meeting, the Southeastern Outdoor Processor. You remember that? Do I remember? It? Do you? you remember? Are you a member? No, no. He doesn't speak plain, but the tobacco in his mouth. No, I, I was wondering what he was They understand me back in Louisiana. <laughs> How many world records on your boat? Yeah, I'm not quite sure, but it's about somewhere between 60 and 70. And that's been uh, over 20 years, I guess. Tarpon? I got tarp. I got about every species: tarpon and kingfish, cobias, sailfish. I had tunas, wahoos, African pompanos. We just caught a 30 and a half pounder on uh, fly rod, eight pound test and tippet. And if uh, people from Louisiana came down, wanted to get in touch with you. Oh, well, that's hard. Captain Robert Trossett. Yeah, that's hard to do. <laughs> well, from what DDH yeah. tells me, it's real hard. 305-292-8583. Leave a message? Leave a message. Well, I can tell them I've been with you twice, and it's been a perfect pleasure fishing on the boat with you. Well, thank you. Fishing's been a little lousy today, so well, we're, we're fixing to do something about that right now. We're, we're going to nail them. All right, well, let's get on to fishing, and, uh, and we'll talk about this other stuff later. Right? Right, right. <laughs> All right, Dee Dee, what you got there, buddy? I don't know, but he's bigger than me. That's a big one. Isn't that something? I'll try to point out where he's going to jump at. All right. I don't know what he wants to do right now. No, he just wants to go straight down. He's mad at me. Just all of a sudden, huh, Dee Dee? All of a sudden, he took off. I was about two, two thirds way through a Hail Mary when he took off. <laughs> what you got there? Yeah. Huh? It ain't typical tarpon. Let's look no, at it. He ain't coming up. RT? No, I had jumped like a tarpon should. What you think it is? A whale? Who knows? <laughs> I saw some weird stuff in there. See a big jack? I mean, he. he Took his quick, you know. He's kind of acting like a tarpon, zipping around, but he just. He ain't zipping like a. Uh... I'm curious to see what he's doing now. Pulling good? <laughs> Pulling pretty good. You want a belt? No. You want a bruise? Yeah, I got a bruise. <laughs> bruise, cruise. Tell me when he's going to jump. You see him? He's about to jump. He's straight down. I don't see him. We don't see him yet. 
as your leader. Oh, a big son of a There's a stingray there. Not a stingray. There. Son of a gun. Son of a somebody. Son yeah. Flatfish. Flatfish. Yeah. With DD? Yeah. Nice one. Are we going to eat it? <laughs> I don't think so. We're going to make scallop steaks out of it. Catch and release. <laughs> you know what we call it back in Louisiana, huh, RT? What's that? It's called catch and grease. <laughs> <laughs> it all gets eaten. Yeah, it all gets eaten. That'll make you some nice scallops there. Yeah. Some of the scallops you buy, I bet you. All right, let's get down for another one. Okay. Oh, I see him. That's all yellowtails down there. That's the best eating fish in the ocean, right? One of the best? One of the best. We're looking for ballyhoo for bait, which is a long-nosed green fish. Right, RT? Jerry, he looks. He's gonna get his motor on. Don't watch. You watch carefully. Don't come in the boat on you. You got him, Jerry. Yeah, I got him, Nick. I see the tenseness in your face. Got good, good action on the jump in here, Jerry. Well, the weight was worth it. Huh? I thought we again, Nick. Here he comes. Where is he? There you go. Man, what action. Cold. That's off now. All right. He's what, Jerry? He's excited, Nick. I know what a sailfish is. fish in the boat at all. Let them go. Well, that's the way to do Catch it. Catch him again. Jerry, Catch good job. Another nice fish, man. That's one. How big was that? Wait, 25, 30 pounds. All right, let's get crack and see if we can't get another one. Hang on. Man. Oh, I got it. I got it. Thank you. 
nice day today. I tell you what, we had a good time. I want to thank you for a great day out on the water. Hey, you're welcome. Okay. And I hope we come back again. I hope you guys can too. Maybe we'll get a little more action. I tell you what, wait till you see how accurate this camera is. I'm pointing right at his nose. Well, I want to close the shuttle. Y'all ready to close it? Go ahead. RT, thank you very much. I had a good time. You're welcome. Maybe come back next year. Well, thank you for being our host on the boat. And Didi, thank you for being my host in Key West. Jerry, I enjoyed being with you, too. I enjoyed it, Nick. What we're doing now is we're returning back to safety. <laughs> See, I got a guy on the, that does the show with me. My old buddy Byron can't be with me this uh, weekend, so Byron, eat your heart out. And until next week, we'll see you on the great outdoors. Well, Nick, I tell you what, that must have been a fabulous trip. D does that satisfy oh, your desire yeah. to it, go to Cuba? It West? really does. It really does. It, I want it doesn't, does it? No. You want to go now, don't you? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, I tell you what, y that, that's pretty. It Let really me tell is. you, we ate nothing but, there's nothing but fresh seafood down is that there. Right? Oh, rock crab and snapper and grouper. Lobster. And, uh, lobster, yeah. anything ooh, you want. Ooh. It's just, yeah. it's gorgeous down there. Well, good. And now's the off season. Yeah. Everything's half price down there now. The the big season is from uh, September till like uh, right around Easter. But now's the off season, really? which is the time we like to go down there and fish and uh, do now stuff. Just rich like people that. can go down there, Nick, or can, can poor people go too? You can. Welcome to this week's edition of Acadiana Outdoors. Stay tuned for the next 30 minutes as your host, Byron Briggs and Nikki Dejan, bring you up to date on what's happening in the outdoor world. Whether we're fishing for big bass, chasing boss gobblers, or after that elusive Boone and Crockett buck, stay tuned for an outdoor adventure you won't forget. And here's your host, Byron Briggs. Welcome to another Kitty and Outdoor Show. Nikki, I'm glad to see you uh, over here today. I, I appreciate you coming by. I'm always here, Bob. I know that. Always. <laughs> when we need you, you're always here. Nikki, last week's show was absolutely fantastic. Everybody just loved that saltwater fishing trip with uh, Dr. D.D. Ardwin and his Ardwin. wife, Bonnie. Yeah. yeah, I tell you what, Barn. And, and we really appreciate them, you know, putting it, helping with, with put the show on and also Gerald. I, tell you, I appreciate being a guest of Dr. Ardway and his wife, uh, his wife at the camp down in Key West. Yeah. But we've got a number of calls, Nikki. That's probably one of the best shows we ever did. Thank you, Byron. I appreciate tell you what, it. just put that camera in my hand and let me go. Let you go, huh? <laughs> Good. Uh, Nikki, today we have a mixed bag. Okay. Long show? Well, it's not that long. Yeah, it's going to be a long show today because we, we let me tell you what we got. So everybody has the time to get a cup of coffee. Oh, yeah. They kick got a, back. That's and, right. Uh, we, well, we, first thing we have is we're going to have Joe Berzas, Chris's son. Uh, he went out to Solo, the St. Anna Parish Solid Waste Commission, gave some signs to put out all the public boat landings. And we're right. going to thank the Boy Scouts, and we got some footage on that. Then we're going to come back with Blair, my son Blair Briggs, and Herman Fondo went out alligator hunting. Right. And we have that to show you. And they got a nine foot one, by the way. And then we also have a short segment on Chico State Park that uh, me and you and Seth went out and did. Right. And then we made a little bass fishing trip. But then uh, then uh, right after that, following that, we're going to have a special uh, double header today. Let's come back and talk about that. We're going to have, uh, it's going to be uh, David McCann was good enough to go out to Terra at Vicksburg, Mississippi and did a show up there. And also, Nikki, there's a camp up at Terra. Terra is a hunting club. That's correct. And they have a camp for, for young kids, and they teach them how to uh, climb deer stands, track, and all that type right. of stuff. And it's going to be very interesting. So, so when this show ends, fo following right behind it, we've got another one coming up. Let's go back to the Boy Scouts for a minute. Um, their project was to put up signs along the bayous and streams where the boat landings were. So the people that hunt and fish and right. use these boat landings don't trash up and make our uh, bayous and streams uh, so uh, ugly looking by throwing uh, Coke cans oh, and, yeah. and uh, you know pop cans and uh, beer cans and right. 
potato chip bags. I mean, if, if you don't do it at home, don't do it while you're right. out there hunting and fishing. It's true, Nick. We, I mean, you know, stick in the boat. Bring your trash bag. Stick it in a bag. Bring it home. Don't right. think you're just going it, to, it's out there, it's going to go away yeah. when you leave. And we do want to thank Julian Curtis and we also Gary Bonvillani with the Santa Ana Parish Salt of Waste Commission. Right. Let's go on and show them this short, short segment. We're going to come on back and then we're going to talk about the alligators. Right. Okay. <laughs> Project for Troop 165. We're putting up uh, an anti litter campaign with uh, Solid Scent Lantern Parish Solid Waste Commission. I'd like to thank Mr. Gary Bonvillian, Mr. Julia, Julian Kurtz, and Mr. Byron Briggs for their help. And what we're doing is we're putting these signs up of uh, 15 different boat launches, boat launches throughout uh, St. Lantern Parish. And uh, we want to remind you to please help keep our bodies clean. <laughs> Nikki, you know, I was just talking to you about some of these other shows. You know, that the other day I was counting, they had 23 commercials on one show. Well, you know, what's unique about our show, it's all it's all hunting and fishing. Right. And uh, you don't have to, uh, we'll tell you who the uh, sponsors are. Let's do it now. All right, let's do it right now. I'll give you a list right there. Get it over and, with. And, and uh, we're going to get our sponsors recognized. All right. Oh, Sam Aaron Bank, where you got that hat, Nikki? Kenny Bajron. You know, Kenny hadn't missed uh, a show since we started in uh january of a year and something yeah. ago yeah kenny watches it all the time he loves the you show. know that every saturday morning uh regional medical right of course uh, regional has always been a sponsor That's right we started and i got i got a license plate right here right. from regional how about opelousa general hospital opelousa general hospital is a sponsor now dc pontiac's been with us a long time a long time charlie over there right so we're not spending three minutes on each commercial yeah we don't have a lot of cuts thrifty uh, thrifty way uh al uh Ken. And uh, Ken and Carl. And Carl. We don't want to forget Carl. We don't even need to say the last name. Everybody knows who Everybody they are. Everybody knows who they are since they've been on here. Yeah. Mossy Oak. Right. Mossy Oak's been good enough to furnish us with a uh, number of clothes, and, we, you know, we're proud to be a sponsor right. of them. Uh, uh, David uh, Prohaska. R&D. R&D Sprayers. You that's know, we, our new sponsor. That's right. You know, we're going to have David, I tell you, on the show. Right. We're going to get him up here. Oh, yeah. He likes to talk. Oh, you think he can talk? Oh, yeah. I okay. know he can talk. Right. Uh, Primos. Primos. Primos Game Call. Wild Game Call. Right. Uh, duck Calls, uh, Wild Game Calls, yeah. Goose Calls, all that kind of okay. stuff. And then, uh, God, there's one more on here, Bob. Joy Dog Food. I wonder if everybody can I tell guess you what, what it is. Yeah, Joy Dog Food. Nikki, let me tell you about Joy Dog Food. All right. Joy Dog Food is just for hunting dogs. And it has a 26% protein, and it's good for retrievers, beagles, and your working dogs, not your house dogs now. I wonder if Mr. and Mrs. Kelly would let me try a bag of that dog I bet food. they would. From Lawtel? Oh, right. From, from my lab. Right. Triple I feed in Lawtel. And if they can't get it, they, they, can, they can ask these other dealers to try and get them some Joy Dog food. But we want them to go to, to Triple I. But if they can't get it there, tell, tell the, the store to get them some Joy Dog food. And, they, and their dog's going to be happy. Right. And also, Nikki, you forgot your buddy. LeBlanc, Chamberlain, and Martin. Now you ought to be ashamed of yourself. All right. Well, I tell you what, Jude, this is for you. <laughs> right. We're sorry about that. Nicky always forgets them. But LeBlanc anyway. Chamberlain Martin Physical Therapy, Opelousas, Louisiana. Right. Uh, Nicky, let's go alligator hunting. All right. Let's go on. We're going on the other side of the Chafla River, and Blair was good enough to go out there, and I couldn't go. And it was a long trip, and they caught a four and a half footer and a nine footer. Right. And uh, let's go on and see that, and then we'll come on right on back. Okay. Good. Whoa. 
Watch out, let me get in the back. <laughs> All right. How big is that one? Small gator. Golly. Bird, <laughs> I don't know if you can see that. You better spread the light off a little while. 